how do you make two bears dance? You're looking for somebody to share your dance steps, share your passion. Passion? That's a good place to start. All right, so I am Pablo Ross, and I am delighted to be here today. Ross is with one S, for the ones that are wondering about what this came from, came from my family. I am from Barcelona, Spain, so that's the accent. He has another accent, he'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, and I am delighted, actually, that Ted Cleveland invited us. It was really not necessary to have my uh, name skywritten uh, <laughs> obviously was not today it was uh, in the past in a rehearsal but uh, I am happy <laughs> happy to be here and share with you our kind of uh, pie in the sky beautiful blue sky vision of uh, something that we think is important and certainly healthcare is one of the top uh, global issues. It wasn't like that a few years ago, but now Obamacare, we all feel it and hear it. Healthcare is full of dilemmas. Uh, reimbursements, uh, cost, particularly cost of innovation in this time of our lives where cost is paramount. But on the other hand, we need to keep on innovating to provide our patients, you, our best possible opportunities. I work, as you heard, at university hospitals and Case Western Reserve University. I am a radiologist. Uh, university hospitals has a long legacy of leadership. Founded in 1866, is one of the leading healthcare systems in the United States uh, and throughout the world. Case Western Reserve University uh, is also a major medical school in the country one of the lead, leading uh, research medical schools in the nation with worldwide reputation. Our task is to provide these incredible images, images that will help you, help us, help many physicians to diagnose and treat disease. So the good news is that there is a doctor in the house. <laughs> the bad news is that he's a radiologist, which... <laughs> so, I have no CAT scans here, so nobody breaks a leg, everybody is okay. So, again, pleasure to introduce Dominic. My name is Dominic Smith, uh, I'm an Irishman from Dublin, Ireland, and uh, I lead uh, a $1 billion division for Philips Healthcare, uh, focused on computer tomography, which is basically taking uh, images of the inside of the human body, like the one on the left here, non-invasively in five seconds. Uh, I also happen to be based in Cleveland, Ohio. And we have a thousand engineers and scientists and manufacturing people based here in Cleveland, Ohio, working on innovations, not only in CT, but also in molecular imaging and MR and many other sciences behind. One of my goals is to find clinical partners that are willing to work with us globally on radical new innovations, progressing healthcare to the next generation. Dr. Ross. Bears. Bears? <laughs> it's, not, it's quite unusual to see bears in the medical presentation. I must admit, this is, this is an unusual thing. Probably a TED influence in this case. But bears are, are wonderful creatures. How do you get large organizations like ourselves to cooperate? And the theme of this is cooperation. I love bears because they, they're also able to adapt into, in their environments, in this case, the polar bear. And I just want this to give you an example because uh, healthcare needs to adapt, healthcare needs to innovate, and hopefully what you're gonna see over the next couple of minutes is some of that innovation in action right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Obviously, he's the black bear, I am the polar bear. <laughs> uh, but uh, these two organizations, if you want, these two big bears, have a couple of important common themes. One, both organizations are patient-centered. For us, the most important priority is the patient, as well as for them. The other thing is that we share goals together. We're all about innovation. We're trying to move the needle in healthcare, trying to detect disease earlier. The earlier you can detect disease with innovation, the earlier you can treat it, and there's better outcomes for the patient. So we share these similar goals. And we share the same town. So uh, Northeast Ohio is not only uh, in Cleveland, it's not only a medical city where people from all over the world come here to have their medical care, 
with institutions like Rainbows and Babies and the Simon Cancer Center, but also is a major hub of medical manufacturing. A lot of medical industry is around here, but particularly medical imaging industry. And of course, a centerpiece of medical imaging productivity in Cleveland is Philips. So pairs have excellent vision. And why is that important? Because vision is very important in imaging. I'll just give you one clinical example, which would be next. So this is, uh, as you can see, a 60-year-old man with a smoking history. The traditional way to see if a patient could have uh, lung cancer was a chest X-ray. Please play radiologist for a minute and try to see if there is anything that catches your eye within the circle. And I can tell you, I would read, I would read this X-ray as negative. The same is this, a routine screening CT scan. So the image on the, on, on the right-hand side you can see here focuses on a new technology that we have called IMR with CT, super low-dose CT imaging, but it can pick out this cancer nodule that you can clearly see that was present in the patient. Truly innovative technique. We have done over 1,000 cases, and we have discovered almost 11, we have discovered 11 cancers, all of them very early stage. All of them, the patients are cured now. Actually, the detection is four times as fruitful as screening mammography, which is that staple that uh, all of us in medicine believe is saving lives every day. So bears are also very opportunistic. <laughs> if you wait long enough, the fish will jump in your mouth. But this is very good. But what if we could collaborate? This theme is collaboration. One of these two, two institutions can collaborate. And we've done that. And we had a great opportunity. And the opportunity was a f collaboration of funding within, uh, actually, with three major players. The state of Ohio through the Ohio Third Frontier Commission and Program, University Hospitals, and Philips. We were extremely lucky in 2010 to receive a $38 million grant to bring the Philips Healthcare Global Imaging Innovation Center to our hospitals. Uh, part of the center is at Simon, part is at Rainbows. Uh, this is truly a global resource where Philips sends us prototypes and first level, if you want, very early uh, pieces of equipment so we can test and co-develop with Philips to the benefit of our patients. So what we've done here is move the latest technology here, not, not all, less than a mile away from this, uh, this, this theater. What you see here is examples of the cutting edge digital PET CT, which you've just installed in the last couple of months, a new CT exam, uh, scanner that's also just been installed in the last couple of months, and a revolutionary PET MR, uh, which is really moving the next generation of what you can see and visualize, particularly in cancer care. But I can talk about technology for hours, and that's what, uh, you know, but the, really what you want to see here is what's the clinical benefit, particularly for patients here in Ohio. Across. So I want to show you a few cases, and now please bear with me. Uh, this, bear with me. Uh, <laughs> we are talking here See, it's working. <laughs> of a 63-year-old woman that was elementary, is an elementary school principal who uh, had salivary gland cancer. Salivary gland cancer is, and this is two MR images. MR, as you may know, maybe you've had one, long tube, things clanking, and you know, inside the tube. Uh, provides the most sophisticated images we can read. Now, you will tell me that, if I, if I tell you, you maybe agree that there is something a little bit different in here. This is a little bit lower in the neck, probably looks normal. But let me show you the advantage of PET-MR. The very first PET-MR that was installed clinically in the United States was here in Cleveland, thanks to the center we were just discussing. And these are the images. Can anybody see the area of abnormality? So this is a lymph node metastasis that has the size of a quarter. Very hard to pick up in the original image. This is the standard, most sophisticated we have. Very easy, makes our life much easier. This is a patient, a 44-year-old practicing nurse with known ovarian cancer. This is a study to see if there is spread uh, sometime after the original surgery. And again, if you are a radiologist like me, an abdominal imager, you may see that there are areas of abnormalities here. 
But look what happened with the PEDMR. We are beginning to see things that I cannot see in the original image. Not only that, but others that are as tiny again as a dime. This is inside the body or completely non-visible in the liver. So very, very much accurate staging. But this is an equal opportunity presentation. So another major malignancy is prostate cancer. 51-year-old businessman. And again, maybe you see the lesions in here in bone, but see how clearly you see them in the PET-MR. Or again, unfortunately for this businessman, in many areas. I want to ask for you to look at this pelvic bone and see that there are many areas of abnormality. Which ones are real, which ones are not. Very easy once you have the PET images comparing. Hot is bad. This thing is bad. So we are not only doing cancer. These are neurodegenerative diseases. We have the very beginning, very exciting for us, the possibility in this 78-year-old grandmother to diagnose and actually quantify the degree of Alzheimer's disease. This is something that we are all working, trying to see these areas as well as in multiple sclerosis. Another whole area, cardiovascular disease, as important as cancer or neurodegenerative diseases, but the way to look at the aorta and the heart in the past was to put a catheter inside the artery. Maybe you've had one in the heart or the arteries look at uh, some bleeding in the groin at the end of the day, invasive for a diagnostic purpose. Now this is what we can do with current technology in CT. This is the heart, these are the vessels, and again the patient receives just a very small injection of contrast in the vein here in the arm, and very, very low dose, maybe with some of the discoveries that we are putting together on the table, maybe 10 times less than it was in the past. My last clinical image is a two-year-old boy that had shortness of breath. Again, for the diagnosis in the past, a big cardiac angiogram, and again, this is the heart of the two-year-old boy. This is the aorta. This is a vascular, congenital vascular malformation that was discovered non-invasively with no preparation, no nothing, and the patient, Rainbow's patient, has been cured of this disease. So you can, as you can see, we've been busy, but hibernation is not an option for us going forward because we have to bring even more innovations to play. Another innovation that we're bringing, slide, is a wonderful new technology that can look at, in this case, liver disease and try and detect liver disease much earlier in the stage. The example on the left is a comparison of this new technology with IMR on CT comparing against three Tesla MR on the right. Again, cutting edge, and this was invented here in Cleveland, Ohio. Cutting edge technology that was showcased internationally as recently as in Vienna last weekend. So this is just an example of the innovation coming from Ohio that we're seeing in clinical practice here. Our last example of collaboration is the Global Center for Health Innovation. You probably have seen it in downtown Cleveland. It's beginning to be called, used to be called in the distant past, like six months ago, it used to be called uh, the Medical Mart. Now it's the Global Center for Health Innovation, or the GLOBE. And we are partnering between Philips and UH to have the first time a collaboration between industry and healthcare delivery system so we can co-sponsor and co-show the advances that we are together bringing to Cleveland and the world. So sometimes things don't go as planned, but the trick here is don't give up. And again, we haven't given up, and I want to kind of leave you with a couple of images. One is to emphasize that we are patient center. Both organizations are patient center. And at the end, this is at the core of our mission to take care of patients. And the other image is an image of innovation and tells you that in innovation, sometimes you have to be brave and break some barriers. And this is a picture that uh, became a front cover of Time Magazine a few years ago. And these are two premature twins, the red twin and the yellow twin. Uh, these were born in a famous hospital in Boston and uh, as part of the protocol, the nurse in the neonatal ICU, these premature twins, put them in two different incubators. 
the yellow baby was not doing well, was, as we said, failing to thrive. And the nurse, against all regulations, put the other twin, primi twin, in the same incubator. She knew that she was going to be fired the following morning, we were baking protocol, and took a picture. This is the picture. In seconds, the bigger, healthier baby put the arm around, the, started to breathe in their mouth, the baby stabilized, the baby was saved, and to this day, in all neonatal ICU units, the premature babies are put together in the same incubator, demonstrating that for innovation, you need common sense, and again, sometimes be able to break the rules or slice in the eyes. But again, this is what we need, and always I feel that this em emphasizes how important human contact is. So it's all about collaboration, but it's all about the patient. And hopefully you've seen examples today when industry and science and, and medical practice cooperate, the patient benefits. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks so much for your attention.